In today's talk on labor law, we're going to look at aspects of the worker and the employer. We come up against such frightening things as dismissal, termination of contract, non-performance, etc., maternity leave. Should one go to an attorney right at the beginning? Yes, we at Bagram's attorneys obviously advocate that you do go see an attorney, not because we're going to charge you, but because you need to protect your rights right from the beginning. Obviously, when you discuss dismissal, you need to understand that dismissal can exist between an employer and an employee only. It can't be an independent contractor. And we advise people right up front whether they, in fact, are independent contractors or not. We also advise employers that the relationship that exists between you and the individual is either one of an independent contractual nature or employment. You must understand that employment is a complex animal and it needs to be carefully looked at before you embark on any course of action. Obviously, the definition of dismissal is when an employer and an employee have a disagreement and it is terminated for a reason good in law. It doesn't mean that it's terminated because of the fluxion of time when you have a contract, which is a short-term contract or a term contract, and the contract comes to an end, that might not be dismissal. It might not be dismissal when someone goes on retirement, and it certainly isn't dismissal when someone passes away. So we need to have a look at what's happened in those particular circumstances. What were the case of an independent contractor? It sounds a strange term. It is a strange term, but for instance, when a plumber comes, because I've got my tap leaking at Bagram's attorneys, we call the plumber in, he fixes the tap, he tells us, oh, this is going to be expensive, I need the five iron to sort it out. You can hear my ignorance. And when he <laughs> and sorts it out, expertise. he gives me an, in, an invoice. I then pay the invoice, I shake his hand, and then he goes off to the attorney's firm next door. And he fixes up their tap. That's a true independent contractor. The law, in terms of Section 200, Capital A, of the Labor Relations Act, says that they're not so interested in the contract that you've set between their employer and whatever that other animal is. They have a look at the nature and exigency of that service, and they say, we're going to define that person as an employee. Even if you've called them an independent contractor, for instance, if they're earning 80% of their income from one source. That's an employee for all intents and purposes, and the receiver revenue agrees with it at the same time. So what we have is we have a very careful look as attorneys, and we have a careful look to see what that relationship is. If it is an employer and an employee, then we have to have a look at to the situation, whether it is a dismissible offense, whether you can in fact dismiss in those circumstances. The termination of contract or the non-renewal of fixed-term contracts can often amount to an unfair labor practice or even an unfair dismissal. For instance, if I'm on a fixed-term contract for 30 days and then at the end of that fixed-term contract my employer comes to me and says, we'll give you another fixed-term contract for 30 days because we still got some work and they keep rolling it over and I keep signing these fixed-term contracts. That could be translated into employment and that I have an expectation of another fixed term contract when that comes to an end because there's still work there. And that termination of that particular contract could amount to an unfair dismissal. Maternity leave. If I go away on maternity leave, I certainly won't, but let's say <laughs> one of the ladies in Bagram's attorneys goes away on maternity leave. Not only do we congratulate them and wish them uh, Godspeed for their maternity, we also know that they're going to come back after those four months. And if you dismiss someone during that maternity leave, you're going to run into trouble. So we advise employers as to how to handle this properly, even if there's been a restructure whilst that person is away on maternity leave. We must have a look at constructive dismissals. And everyone talks about this. Constructive dismissals is where an employee resigns because they feel they're in a situation where they have to. They've got no choice in the matter. What is that normally? What if you haven't received your salary for three months? You're not going to starve. So what you have to do, you're forced to resign and find employment elsewhere. Now, the bottom line with that is that can amount to a constructive dismissal. The law looks at it and says that's a dismissal, despite the fact that you've resigned. It sounds dreadfully unfair. It is, or but can be. they can construct it that you have to resign. For instance, if I'm your boss and every day when you come in, I hit you. 
you can't expect me to come to work the next day if I'm going to be hit. And therefore I'm going to send in my letter of resignation. I ask the employees, always put in why you've resigned. Mm. So that you can see that this is truly a constructive dismissal type situation. We need to discuss many other areas, but I see we haven't got the time. Time runs out very quickly, does it not? There you are, and it's a very complex subject that we talk about in labor law. If you'd like more information about any aspect of labor law, do contact Michael Bagram by email, michael at bagrames.co.za, or by telephone. Bagrames are in the book.